So the first thing I'm going to do is let's create the player. Let's create the player because this is a Space Invaders game. We need to have some input. We need to be able to move. We need to be able to fire rockets. It's things like that. So just like you would do in a normal Unity game, I'm going to create a game object. This is going to be our player. Uh, it's This is a game object. There's nothing special about this yet. The, I could hit play right now, right? We'll hit play right now. Obviously, things are going to work. Uh, just because I've used the ECS packages doesn't mean I can't still use game objects and things like that. Uh, the game's running, obviously, and, you know, we're not doing anything. And just for, let's take a look now. We're using about 3 milliseconds of CPU per frame, which gives us close to about 300 frames per second. Let's keep that in the back of our head as we start implementing this game and see what performance starts to do as, uh, as we add systems and add, add um, logic into our game. But we have a player. In Unity, they have a real simple system of saying, I want to build an entity in the editor. Because normally, the Unity editor is all about game objects. But entities are not game objects. ACS system does not work with game objects. It is a completely different system. So the editor, Unity, gives you a way uh, to make this easy, though. They, they say, okay, we can let you design... Uh, your entities using the editor uh, as a game object, and then they will do all the behind the scenes work for you of making that an entity in the entity world system, which is again, not the same as a game object. They are not the same thing and they don't play together. Uh, you have to glue them together yourself if you choose. We're not gonna be really doing that today. So uh, if I want to say, okay, I want a player and I want to build this player, it's a prefab or not a prefab, but I want it to be an entity, all you have to do is add this convert to entity mono behavior. So this is a mono behavior. It's a very simple mono behavior. It doesn't do anything out the gate until you uh, until it plays, until this awakens. Uh, but what it's going to do is it will convert, and then it will destroy our game object. And uh, you can also choose instead to convert and, in, and keep the game object. Uh, it doesn't tie those together just because you're injecting the game object and you're converting it. The entity that it converts is completely separate and isolated from the game object that it will keep around. It lets you keep it around for whatever reason you want to, but these objects are not related. An entity, again, an entity and a game object are not the same thing. They are not related in any way. This is just a conversion system that for now makes this easy to build uh, entities in the editor. This will probably change in the future, but this is what they have until the editor can support entities natively. It doesn't at the moment. So we're going to convert and destroy. And if I play the game right now, if we play the game, what you're going to see here is that player went away, right? We lost our player object because it converted and destroyed the game object. If we go into our analysis and we pull up the entity debugger, which is a very, very important thing to keep around, uh, when we're developing these games, you're going to see some interesting things pop up here. First of all, it says this thing up here called the default world, and you can show all worlds. And there's uh, other worlds here that we're going to ignore because I only care about the default world. And in general, uh, this is all you're going to use. You're going to use the default world and nothing else. Well, what is a world? Uh, a world, and the smart folks at Unity decided that, well, if we're going to have these entities and these components and these systems... Uh, which really is a query system, and we'll talk about that when I when we build a system here shortly. When we're building a system, essentially what we're doing is we're querying for entities that meet a criteria. We're, we're trying to find entities that meet some component criteria. So it's really a query system. Uh, they have this concept of a world where an entity can only live in one world. A system runs in a single world. And it will only know about the entities for the world it's running in. You can have multiple worlds if you want. It's a way to bifurcate or to separate out uh, data if you need to. Uh, data cannot share, cannot communicate across worlds natively. And normally you don't want to do that. In fact, most of the time you're going to stay with just a single world and do everything in that world. It's very optimized and, and, uh, and you'd be fine. You can run hundreds of thousands of entities in a single world and not see any type of issue. Uh, but you can't have multiple worlds. Today, we're going to focus in on just a world. We're not going to do anything outside our world, and we'll, we'll keep it to there. But they do exist. You can't have multiple worlds. Assume we're only using one, or that assume we only have access to one. So when we look at the entity debugger, we can choose our world, and it chooses the default for us. We can now see some interesting things here. These are systems. 
These are groups, which you can put a system in a group and it just runs everything together. But ultimately here are systems. And these systems are all the default systems that come with Unity. Uh, these systems always run unless you make some weird adjustments. And because we're using the render system, the hybrid render system, we get this render mesh system built by Unity. It comes with that package. And this is how it will render entities that have meshes onto the screen for us. So we don't have to worry about it. As long as we have an entity and it has a mesh assigned to it, uh, we'll be okay. We'll be, we'll, um, it'll get rendered. And it'll get rendered in the right position as we update it. There's all these other systems. Most of these we're not going to look into. Initialization is not so uh, interesting for us for today. <clears throat> Most of what we're going to be doing is in this thing called the simulation system group. All of our systems we're going to write are going to go into this system group. What group things live in does not matter except if except when ordering matters. When a system executes, if you have a system that's dependent on another system uh, from uh, calculation of data, you can specify that that says a system should run after a different system, or you can specify that a system should run in a specific group. Like we could write a system and we can have that system run in the presentation system group if we wanted to, and that runs after the simulation happens, right? The simulation system group always runs first, and then the presentation system group will run. So you can decide what group you want to put a system in if ordering matters. If it doesn't matter to you, that's okay. You don't have to do that. It'll just run uh, based off of its default uh, ordering that gets assigned when it gets registered. On the right-hand side, if we choose systems all entities for our default world, we would see all the entities in our system. And right now we have just two entities. We always get world time. This is the Unity system. This is how it tracks time uh, throughout the game. See, this has been elapsing for 233 seconds, and we have our delta time. You should understand what that means uh, in an update method, right? You have access to delta time still. Uh, but we have this player object. Remember, we had this game object. We had it as a convert object. And then we hit play, it got deleted, but the entity for it got created, got converted, and then it got instantiated. So we have a live entity in the game right now, uh, and it actually has a couple of components. It has this local to world component, it has a rotation, and it has a translation. This is because we're using that hybrid uh, rendering system, and we're using the convert system. And what that does behind the scenes for you is it takes your transform of a game object, and it converts that into a couple of components, into a rotation, into a scale, if you have scale, into a translation, and then this local to world is essentially local space and world space. So it gives you these components for free. So now you, if you wanted to, you can update the position, the rotation, and the scale of an entity, and that would be used by the render mesh system down here to know how, you know, where it should render, how large it should render, if it should rotate. It will use all that data, just like the normal transformation system will use it. Of course, you can also use it in a physics system. You can use this data wherever you want, but these are built-in components that you will get for free if you use that convert system. If you create your own entities in code, you will not get these by default. You have to add them if you want, but if you're using the game object to entity converter, you will get these for free, and they will be assigned to, uh, to the default values based off of whatever your game object transformation data is. And you can see our data is uh, is been reset. Uh, so all that data is also reset when we run the game. 